there you, so you can see kind of what that's going to look like when we when we get this going. So they'll have their, their idle state right there, and then they'll go in their charge state, and then charge you, and then go back to their idle state, where right now they basically have two states, either idle, uh, and then just through straight up uh, sprite swapping uh, a charge state. So I'm going to start by creating an animation, one for idle and a controller. So I'll have a, an idle state and then a charge state that plays once and goes back to the idle state. And then we'll do it. We'll try to do it the the, the Unity way. I mean, there's a couple ways you can do this, but the Unity way would be to have um, an animator and a controller, and then basically use the controller to manage your state. So we'll go through that process. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna pick one of these guys and just work on this guy right here. And I think we're gonna make these a little bit smaller. They've ended up being uh, touch too big because you can see the player there and uh, like they're about as big as the player. Yeah, so I'll probably shrink them a little bit. So there's a couple ways you can do this. Usually what I do is I will just bring up the animation. I'd like to keep it down here. This just seems like a logical spot for it. Uh, and then create, and it's probably different schools of thought on how you keep your uh, related assets together. Uh, in the past, I've tended to have like an animations folder, but more recently, I've been keeping the animations with the sprites just because it seems to like they're pretty much tied together. Unless you're kind of trying to reuse animations or something, this seems uh, this seems fine. So I think these guys are in hazards, so we'll roll with that. And I'm gonna call this. So we'll start with. And this is a convention I've seen before that some people will use, which is doing like the thing at the verb or the state. So like swarmer at idle. Because uh, that way it's just a little bit easier if you see like kind of a stray uh, animation floating around. Uh, where'd you go? Sprites. Right. So if I hadn't done that, this would just be called idle. Um, and this just helps to keep keep everything together, right? So you can see there's the Swarmer controller, there's Swarmer idle. So don't know if that's the Unity best practice, but just something that I've been doing just to keep things kind of kind of tidy. Uh, I should mention as well for those just joining, uh, we will be doing a giveaway uh, a little bit later. So we are we're in alpha. We've just started doing a closed alpha, um, but I generated one too many keys, so I figured I'll just give that one away here. And uh, for the people participating in the closed alpha, uh, we are asking them to complete a post-play survey uh, as part of that in order to keep their key. But for tonight, uh, that's no strings attached. If you want to do the survey, um, it's much appreciated, but no, no obligation at all. Okay, so we'll start with our idle animation. And so, Really, all we need to do for this is add a property sprite, and that should do it. Right, so it just loops by default. It just took the current uh, the current sprite and created just uh, two uh, two keys for that. So easy. I'm gonna add another one. It's going to be swarmer at swarm. Now we'll go swarmer at charge. And same thing. And I think I'm just going to do a little test here just to kind of find what the right scale is, like what the right speed is. You can speed this up and slow it down after after the fact. You can change the samples, for example, um, which is one way to do that. But it's bitten me a couple times when I've tried to like change the scale on one, and then I had a similar animation and copied from one to the other. I ended up with some some stuff getting out of sync. So, so I think what I'll do is I'll just try to get 
say three frames looking looking okay and then maybe two frames looking okay and then do yeah And you'll notice I have the uh, record button clicked here. So as I go in and make changes here, um, it will write those wherever I am on the timeline. So I didn't necessarily need to create those those keys, but I wanted them to be on, you know, the zero and the twenty and the forty and the the one. And so you'll see how it kind of jumps at the very end there. So what we need to do is we just need to add another one here. And we'll put that on the 20, the 120. Okay, so that's enough to do a kind of basic, basic setup here. So basically we'll play that. And then I'm going to set up in the controller, I'm going to set a state uh, and we'll call it charge that will play this one time and then go back into idle. Yeah, the one thing we'll have to see is you know, we probably want him to look kind of angry for as long as he's moving. So we'll try that out first to see what it's like. But I may have, I may have like an intermediate state where it just stays on, say, this frame. So as another animation, um, and then moves to idle maybe when the the velocity is below a certain threshold or something like that. Uh, and in fact, there is a way that can be done with the uh, with the controller too. So you can basically define different ways of saying I want it to transition if I set, you know, an explicit state or if I set, you know, if this value that I'm passing in exceeds a certain value, um, things like that. But we'll just do something simple for now. So on entry, it goes right to idle. And then I'm going to add a trigger called charge. So it's basically like a Boolean. You set it to true. Uh, and then from here, if charge is triggered, goes into here, and then we'll go back. Yeah, I think what I want to actually do just to make this a bit easier to test is, I think, I'm going to apply this just to get the animator on the prefab here. And then I think if I go into a new scene, it's a little bit easier. Because what I want to do is I want to... I'm going to want to play the scene so I can actually interact with the controller. That's the one the one little sort of quirk or caveat of using this, is you can't really see it in action from here. Um, I mean, you can to a point. I think you can do a little bit of previewing in here, but... Um, I like to kind of just play around with this stuff here and have the thing playing and, and see what happens and kind of get a feel for it. So uh, it's nice to do that just in a little standalone scene without have to, you know having to actually worry about dying in the game and stuff. So um, the only caveat is if there's if there are things you know in this uh, in this script that might expect yeah like you might be looking for a player, but I'll try it out. Worst case, we get some exceptions. Yeah, I can see. But that's okay. That probably just stopped it from... Yeah. Probably just stopped the coroutine running, which is fine. We don't really need that running anyway, so... 
Now what I'd like to do is put these side by side. And see, now I can play around a bit more effectively. So, but you saw there's a little bit of a, a delay there. So I want that to be more, well, pretty much instantaneous. So, so you can see there's some settings here. And by default, it's doing a crossfade at the end of the idle animation, so it's waiting till the end of the idle animation, uh, which we don't really we don't really need it to do. So uh, we don't need it really. We don't really need a transition. Um, so I think. I think that should do it. Let's try that. Okay, so it's still waiting for the end. There we go. So basically, no exit time, no no transition, just instantly jump, and that's fine. If this had multiple frames, you might not want to do that. You might want to blend them a bit more smoothly, but this is just a single frame, so that's fine. Yeah, at the very least, I want this final frame for longer. Because it's a bit abrupt, so we'll say, I don't know, something like that. Wondering if we should. It's a bit abrupt from this frame back to idle. So I'm not exactly sure if this is what Felix had in mind for this or not. But I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. He can always go in and tweak it. Just want to get it, really, just want to get it integrated and working, and then he can play around with it as he sees fit. So I'm going to put this back over here. And so I'm going to ditch I'm going to ditch these attack sprite idle sprite. We don't need those anymore. And we'll see what that breaks. Like I say on every stream, if I stop talking, it's because I'm just I'm reading or thinking. That's just all part of all part of development. I'm wondering why it's setting. This might might have been one of the quirks I was noticing. It's setting the attack sprite at the very start here for some reason. doesn't quite make sense to me. It should be doing that when... So... It's basically just an infinite loop here, running in the background kind of thing in a coroutine. And then every so often we'll check to see uh, if we can see the player, if we can hit them with a raycast, and then charge. So that's a bit weird. So, don't need that. And I think we want to give the player a little bit of a heads up. Like right now it looks like, if I'm reading this correctly, as soon as it sees the player it will Add force. So 
So I think what I'd like is we've done kind of the same thing with with the we have a turret or like a sniper kind of thing that will that will follow you. And when it sees you, we'll wait like I don't know, a hundred milliseconds or something, and then so it'll stop, wait, and then shoot. So really. I think we just want hmm, I don't know what that was about, some experiment. We'll wait, uh, we'll wait 100 milliseconds. Uh, then we'll play charge animation. Actually no, we'll play the charge animation, wait, then charge, and then we shouldn't really need any of this. Yeah, I don't really know what I was thinking here. Oh, okay, yeah, I was kind of doing that, just not really in the right spot. Yeah, I was setting the attack sprite then doing the check. So potentially setting the attack sprite and never actually charging. And I think maybe... So the way it's set up right now, it'll wait, it'll charge, then wait. A slightly random amount of time. I'm thinking that it should maybe be based on velocity, so we'll charge, and then when it when it's slowed down to a certain point, then charge again. But for now, I'm going to keep this, and I'm going to say to one to uh, one to three seconds. All right, so two plus random minus one to one. The other thing we need to, to tie this all together is we need an animator. So I just like to do this just to make sure we have an animator and we can reliably get that component. So this will force, if you ever add the swarm hazard to a game object, it will automatically add an animator for you. And then on start, we'll get that. Uh, you could also do this on a wake. I'm just putting it here because I already have a start. And we don't really need this thing to, to start up right right away, so that's fine. So it's gonna be animator dot set trigger. Yeah, that should should do it. At some point, I need to add some sound effects to this guy as well. I see there's. I think I'm reusing this from a past, uh, past game, and I see there's some logic here to trigger some audio when they charge, but I don't think I actually created any sound effects for this yet. I don't see anything on here. All right, well, let's give that a shot. Back in the full scene. I think that was Moon Six.
that delay now. Right with that uh, 100 millisecond delay. So I might speed them up a little bit. I don't like the idea of having no delay because it's a bit it's a bit unfair. So let's, let's see. And this bit of randomization here just to add some, so they're not all kind of charging at exactly the same direction, exactly the same speed. Let's try. Let's see, swarm speed. 250. Uh, and there is some. clamping going on as well, so I'm trying to limit their max velocity. Because what was happening is they'd, they would charge, they would charge again, they would charge again, and they would keep, because it's using uh, the physics engine, they would keep building up speed. So they ended up like zipping across the, the level. It was a bit unfair. So I'll have to get my swarm speed Yeah, because these are expressed in different, like one is expressed as an add force, as a force, one is expressed as a max length. So well, we'll play around, we'll play around with the numbers a little bit and see, right, because I may bump up this and find that the clamping uh, is, is preventing it from working. I'm just going to bulk edit these for now just to try some things. Take off. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take off the clamping for a second here just to see, to see what that's like. minds to take out these guys.
That's not bad. Could use a bit more tuning, but I think I want I want them to bounce around a bit more too. I might just bump up the uh, bounciness. So I really want to get them bouncing off each other too, and and the the walls. tonight, but maybe the next iteration have them do a little bit of kind of predict predicting. just to do some uh, debugging. So what I like to do with these sorts of things is just make them... Uh, we're using something called Odin, which basically is kind of editor, uh, an editor extension. So it allows you to do really nice, really nice custom inspectors just using these attributes. So that'll just make it more obvious in the editor that it's meant for informational purposes. Tonight's drink of choice is. Probably can't see that. No, you can't. Rise kombucha. It's my uh, my beer substitute when I when I want beer, um, but shouldn't have it because I've I've had enough. <laughs> Doesn't quite satisfy the same uh, same need, but um, it's like fermented tea uh, with like flavor added. All natural. Really good for your your stomach, probably better than beer. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that for tonight, so I think I'll pick a, I'll uh, pick something else to work on for a little bit here. And I'd like to get a couple more people on the stream before we do the giveaway, so I've got a giveaway for uh, a copy of this, and we'll also do the big reveal of tonight's t-shirt. Uh, but we'll keep going for a little bit. So I'm going to commit that. So I want my swarmer prefab script and then my new controller and animations. And I'm just going to take my text from here. So this is the tool I've been using for, for tracking my work. Hey, it's Ricardo. There he is. And he's brought some people with him. That's all right. No, I knew you had stuff going on, so. Uh, you may have missed tonight. So tonight's drink of choice is, I guess you could, it's not quite alcoholic, but it's uh, kind of alcoholic. Kombucha. Rye's kombucha. Not my favorite, but it's what I can get at the grocery store. So it's like fermented tea with, uh, in this case, some lemongrass uh, added. So it doesn't quite satisfy the same itch, but um, still pretty tasty, I find. And really good for your your stomach as well, fermented food in general. I'm a big fan of like uh, like kimchi and stuff like that. Yeah, no scotch tonight. Maybe tomorrow. 
Uh, and I haven't done the t-shirt reveal yet, nor the giveaway, so I've got a giveaway for Super Rocket Ride, which we'll do a little bit later, and I'm going to tie that into the, the t-shirt reveal, so it's going to be whoever can tell me the franchise of tonight's t-shirt uh, will, will get a free copy of Super Rocket Ride. Uh, so yeah, I'm using a tool called Hack and Plan to track uh, track work. I've tried a couple different tools out. Uh, the one I would I would choose is a little bit beyond my price range right now. Uh, that's Favro. I really like that. It's really kind of lightweight, uh, really kind of drag and drop, super easy to do stuff. Um, Trello. I've used Trello a lot, but I find it's just a little a little too basic for me. There's stuff I'm looking for that it doesn't do, like a dedicated backlog. Um, and swim lanes as well to be able to group stuff. Hack and Plan doesn't really do that, but it has these different types of cards, so you can at least use those to organize like art versus design. So it's already pre pre configured for you know game disciplines. So okay, so we're gonna commit. Commit this. Spawner, that's Swarmer. Uh, and I'm using Git Crack in here for, for Git. And somehow I seem to have an individual license. I don't know how that happened. I don't remember paying for it. But hey, and I don't know if, if I'm even using the features that come with that, but hey, I won't complain. Alright, we'll push that, and then we'll, we'll tackle something else.